Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Um, hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another episode of the show. And I've got, is it Elaine? Yes. Okay, and then pronounce your last name again. Moix. Moix, okay. Because I'm still learning French pronunciations. And uh, the lady I was talking to earlier was... Uh, okay, and uh, so she she had uh, given me a little brief uh, tour of the vineyards and we went up, uh, looked a little farther up the hill and uh, with the facility, so we are here at um, we are here at Chateau Fonro. Okay, make sure I pronounce that right. And uh, here in Saint Emilion, and this is uh, the second chateau I've been to since I've been in the Bordeaux area. And we've got a, I've got a few more to go to in the next couple days. And uh, he's been LA has been kind enough to take some time out of the harvest. You can kind of hear it in the background a little bit um, that they're working on sorting the grapes and uh, take some time out to, uh, to visit and do a little tour and taste some wine. So we've got, um, in front of us we've got uh, two vintages of uh, Fon Roque. We have 2008 2009. We're going to start tasting those in a little bit, but first let's uh, talk a little bit more about uh, you and the Chateau and the history of it. Well, Fon Roque is a family estate. Okay. It was built by my great grandparents in 1931. So in the fourth generation. And I've been in charge of Forok from uh, 2005. Okay. Forok is what we call the Montreux classification, you know, the 70 million classification. And uh, it's a 17 and a half pounds, which for 70 million is for the first time. And uh, it's noted with uh, 85% Merlot, 15% Cadamant. Okay. As you know, Bordeaux, we blend, we blend the variety. So uh, we produce two wines, Chateau Parot, first level, on the classé, and we have a second level for the Chateau Parot. Uh, we are looking enough to be the first to the village, so which means that uh, we are on a nice one soil, despite the uh, uh, fine carbon city of the city of with uh, one part of the limestone plateau, which are so very shallow, that produce wine very much on the mineral side. And then we have a big site where the clay is mixed with the limestone, and this clay gives uh, some power to the one, some middle time. So the, as the one from the limestone starts to be a bit narrow, the very, very the one from the inside may be straight or not. But still, with this uh, mineral clay from the limestone, it has this horrible place. And uh, that I like to feed my wife because. Uh, Narrow and limestone, except around 70 million, and it's in the other places in the planet where you can find it. So, our aim is to make sure that this will finish in the glass. Our aim is to make a wine that uh, will express the soil and uh, the fruit as few as possible, which is just the type of work. Uh, for that, we are using uh, a technique called biodynamic in the vineyard which are uh, many values. One of them is uh, equally producing. Uh, one of them is the fact that for the workers, they don't have to play around with the honey product. Mm -hmm. But also, it uh, tends to have the value in the soil, and the fact that you feed the soil in the So I believe that the honey is a good way to really make the singular one, or the most singular, maybe yes, but clearly the point where the wine comes from. Uh, then what I like also is uh, to make sure that when you taste the wine, you feel the soul, not me, because I'm here for two years, and uh, I'm not important in this way. <laughs> so, uh, my enemy is a way to really uh, make your grace, your wine, your taste, uh, in the pot, 
and uh, as that, I think it's, uh, it's uh, something I want to carry on. We are really doing it on a different level. Okay. That changes the way we, we work very much. You know, we have to be much more engineer. Uh, it's a bit a bit more risky. You have to spend more time, you have to be there, you have to understand much more of the wine, you have to really get to observe what's happening in the soil and what's happening in the wine. In fact, at the end of the day, you have to be more. But uh, you like to get a lot of heat, and I think you get much more from the wine. So, we have to condense it a little bit. And basically what you're saying is you're, you're letting the grapes speak for themselves, you're not, you're not trying to manipulate, no. just... And also, the uh, same thing with the vintage. In mean, Bordeaux we have a bit, uh, some people, when it's a light vintage, have to make the wine in a desk. Mm -hmm. uh, they have to use different techniques, uh, of course, more than that. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't do that here. We are very happy to have a whole seven, a little bit of a profile that still have to wait. And so, you know, I think this diversity was a part of the business of the world. We are not making a ministry of the world, but it's got to be the same as the So, for that also, I mean, uh, and the philosophy that we are looking uh, at as best as possible. It doesn't mean that we don't check. You know, we have to be there and we have to be there. Help with the reason and the content of the system. But we want to have a very specific look. You know, uh, there is an American, well, we are not American, but uh, from uh, Poland, we have made this uh, career in, uh, in the state uh, architect for the team on the wall. And he was saying, and this is more. Okay. And I think the one meeting, this is more. Mm -hmm. The rest you do, the more you get from the rest. Well, and, and I've seen that philosophy elsewhere. Um, I have an old, old friend of mine that uh, in the music and audio world, um, he, had a, he had a phrase, he said, when in doubt, leave it out. Mm. You know, because if, if you don't know whether you should put it in, the, you should put something in, whether, you know, a musical type of thing, if you are not sure if it makes it better, then leave it out. And, you know, it, it's probably going to come out fine. You know, don't, you, like, we, the you know, kind of, Conversation we've already had, and, you know, you're not trying to put so much into the wine. Um, let it, let it, let it progress naturally. Yeah, and you know, this kind of product like uh, yeast and wine, and then uh, people are sometimes using the wine. If you have a pollen content, they can be used. But only if you have a pollen. You know, if you are not sick, you will take it. Right. And uh, if you feel that you have to put them in all the time, it means that. Then you have to go back to the media. So you call it somewhere else. If you have good works, that's the best. You don't have to use those things. Correct. Makes sense to me. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and, and taste this. Uh, this is the 2008. And. Um, it's really something. Yeah. <laughs> It's not quite a It's quite complex. It's got some uh, fruity side with black wine. Yes, some dark fruits and... It's also floral. I think I even get a little bit of chocolate yeah. in there. Really nice. And... and as, as people who watch my videos know, I, I'm a big believer in, in not just slamming the wine down, not just drinking it, but really smelling it. And when you have a, when you have a great bouquet, I, could, I mean, I can literally just sit there and just smell. I mean, I'll be in a restaurant if I have a, a nice wine or at home, and um, I, will, I will spend probably just as much time smelling the wine as tasting it. And just to reiterate a lot of times, you have to remember that your your taste, your sense of taste comes from your nose. It's not, I mean, your, your tongue only has four sensations. So you're tasting strawberries. It's not because your tongue tastes. It's because the aromas are actually going to the back of your, your nose. Um, so smelling the wine before, I think, is just as important as tasting. Do you pop it? Yeah. 
Definitely. This is why I'm from the cinema. <laughs> yes, and I'm becoming more and more fan of Theater of the Wilds. It's because unfortunately, the first my first experience that I can remember with Theater of the Wild was not a good one. So unfortunately, I made a, a snap judgment that Pinot Noir is not a good wine. Well, it wasn't a, the, the wine that I had wasn't a great wine. It doesn't mean that the grape doesn't produce great wine. And yeah, that was quite a long time ago when I didn't really understand wine very much. And now that I've been studying it pretty seriously for the past few years, you know, I've gotten a lot more respect for Pinot Noir and just wine in general. So. Sometimes some people say that my wine is a little bit Burgundy like. Okay. For me, it's a compliment. And I can see that, I can see that, yes. Alright, let's taste this. Oh, this is wonderful. Not only am I getting the fruits, but I'm getting a little bit of um, a little bit of pepper, and I'm, I'm a sucker for pepper. I absolutely love you get bell peppers or jalapeno type of we have uh, flavors. Fifteen percent of coming from, and that's where that's just, and uh, it's very hard to buy a very poor food mm -hmm. on the taste side, and uh, we feed them here. We bring these people like. You also have a good rolling side of this one, like a violet. Yes. And a little hint of cockles start to be there. This comes from the right side. And you need the minerality in the fresh. Right. We were talking about the limestone really brings up minerality. Not the limestone itself, but how there's not much soil and the the uh, the roots only have a little bit of soil to go through until they hit to the rocks. Yeah, the roots. They leave the rock and they throw the rock. And they get the rock shaft. Right. Because the soil on the top is not heavy soil. It's quite a light soil. And everything comes from this. this uh. Now let's try the 2009, right? Yes. So this one was better in May. Okay. It's a little bit more plumy. Yes. And, 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 that, and on the 2008, I was catching a little more of the floral uh, on now than it was with the 2009. It's definitely, there's definitely a lot more of the plum, and pretty much that's the dominant. Um, Aroma on that, but you know it's still pretty young. Yeah, just bottled. Just bottled, so it still has. It still needs a little more time to to develop. And just even that one year. You know, I, I find there's definitely a big difference in the taste. With the 2008, I get more of the I get more of the the fruit and the floor aspects, along with the pepper. Whereas for me, on the 2009, I'm only I, I really get more of the pepper aspect. Um, so it, it it's definitely needs more time to develop. It's still young. Uh, you feel that it's uh, very dense. Yes. Probably sure the right. And you feel that the texture is nice. So this one. In the two or three years, we have a velvety texture. Right. And now it's like that, it's always like that. And one thing to talk about, which, which we didn't really talk about, is there isn't, um, neither neither wine really has um, a very big uh, feel, which is something that you don't want, right? This is something you were talking about. You don't like to have really big wines and that you have to be very careful of, right? I'm looking for harmony. Right. And the nature of harmony is very different. So I don't like to do more than uh, my neighbor. 
Right, I try to do what I feel uh, is the best one. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, which means seek to right and not to right, which means uh, extract and not to extract. Right. And which means put in balance and not get to go away. You don't really feel the wood. As soon as I feel the wood, I think there is nothing. And that's something to, to think about where, you know, there's a lot of uh, American wineries that really love, not just American, but a lot of, a lot of places around the world love to really use wood to, to enhance the wine. And there, there's a time, there's a time and a place for that, but uh, it's nice to have, you know, the wood's not there to, to overpower the wine, it's just, it's there, just as another, as another, another yeah, part of the, of the process. The, the Right. If it is a solid, then uh, the wood is one, it's a little bit the same. Mm -hmm. and, uh, what I like is um, that the environment in which the wine is the freshness and this kind of verticality that you, you obviously feel that the wine are made from the right place. Right. But you don't have the problem that you may sometimes get with the right vest, you need the wine that is very flat and always on top here you still have a good SVP and a better which uh, also helps to have a good lens. And the lens is what makes the wine good. Mm -hmm. So at this point, I have a very long lens, and I think that my grandchildren, if one day I have some, will still be able to enjoy this one. Well, these are, I mean, both excellent wines, you know. The I see a lot. I see a lot of uh, potential for the 2009, and it's you know now that it's been poured, you know over over the past few minutes we've been talking, the nose has really opened up a lot more. And you know it's definitely showing it's showing it really nicely, and uh, I think it's you know it's going to be really great. I, I just want to say I'm blown away, really. By just my visit so far, and then the hospitality that everyone has shown me, um, and not just not just at the chateau, but everybody, you know, what I mean, I'm staying in Pauillac, and just everybody that's been there, and just you know, the how everyone's been nice here, and it's just, it's been great. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, right. And you know, this is a uh, harvest time. Yes. And at uh, harvest time, we have lunch with the pickers. They don't eat sandwich from the, in the car. But we, you know, we cook and we all have lunch together. And so I think it's um, more or less time to go into the pickers. And have okay. Together. That would be great. So um, we're going to wrap this up. Um, either one of these wines, you know, definitely if you if uh, if you find them where you're at, you know, I would say get them. You probably want to hold on to them for a little bit. If you want to drink them now? You can, but they're definitely going to. Uh, Progress definitely do better over time. Do you have a suggestion of how long to uh, to wait well, on these? And you don't want to wait too long. You want to they're a little bit right. And now look, tend to open it uh, maybe more quickly than other varieties. Or uh, eight, I think, still need a one year or two. Mm -hmm. Nine, a little bit more. Right. Okay. Then, because they have this uh, good lens, they can wait for the next thirty years. If you want, but you don't have to wait. Right. <laughs> and, you know, that, that's one of the philosophies I've heard is that, you know, you, you're not looking to, I mean, you, you, want a, you want the wine to be able to age well, but at the same time, you, you also want wine that you can drink relatively soon, maybe not as soon as it's bottled, but um, not, not you particularly, but, but in general, the, the area. Um, but, you know, if you can find either one of these wines, absolutely seek them out. Um, you know, I think the 2008s, you know, drinking really well. Uh, 2009 definitely needs a little more time, like you said. Um, you know, give it another year or two uh, for the 2008, a little bit longer for the 2009. But both wines are excellent um, and highly recommend it. Uh, that's going to do it for today. Uh, I've got some other things to do today. We've been bringing some lunch and uh, we visit another chateau. And uh, we'll have some more the rest of the week. Uh, as always, thank you for stopping in and we'll see everybody again next time.